Hello, we're going to be doing standard 3.1, which is on the time-independent Hamiltonian and the time evolution that corresponds to it. We're going to be doing problem 3.10 out of McIntyre, and it states, consider a spin one-half particle with a magnetic moment. At time t equals zero, the state of the particle is five zero equal to plus, so it's spin up at time zero. The system is allowed to evolve in a uniform magnetic field B, which is equal to B naught, times x hat plus z hat, all scaled by 1 over root 2. And what is the probability that this particle will be measured to have spin down in the z direction after time t? So to do this, we know we're going to have to be using a Hamiltonian since we're talking about time evolution. And since the magnetic field is uniform and not changing, we're going to be using the time-independent Hamiltonian. And we know that we can calculate this by this equation. h, which is the Hamiltonian, is equal to negative mu dotted with b, where mu is the mag magnetic dipole moment, and here b is our magnetic field. So through substituting with some known values, we can get a matrix representation of, of h in the Z SC basis. So we have h equal to charge of electron over the mass of electron times our spin vector here dotted with the magnetic field vector. We substitute in the value given above for the magnetic field, and we get this equation omega naught over root 2 times the sx operator plus the sz operator, where omega naught is these coefficients as followed. This gives us the following representation of the Hamiltonian, which is equal to h bar times omega naught over 2 root 2 times the matrix 1, 1, 1, negative 1. And now that we have the corresponding Hamiltonian for this particle, in the magnetic moment, we can find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors through diagonalization. And doing this, we can then find the corresponding energy eigenstates, and then we can look at our system from there and get the probability that we desire. So through setting up the characteristic polynomial by looking at the determinant, we get this following characteristic polynomial, which is lambda squared minus 2 times h bar over 2 times root 2 omega naught, all squared. And we can solve this for lambda to get our two eigenvalues. This shows that the possible measurements are plus or minus h bar omega naught over 2. So to find the corresponding eigenvectors of, with these eigenvalues, we can first substitute our positive eigenvalue back in, and we get this corresponding eigenvalue equation. We can solve the system and get our eigenvector e plus. That should be an e1. And it follows that the normalized eigenvector corresponding to this eigenvalue is e1, which can be represented as followed. This is a little messy, I do note. And we can do an identical process for a negative eigenvalue, the minus h bar omega naught over root 2, or is it 2? Over 2. And this gets us the normalized eigenvector as followed. Once again, very messy. So the next step to finding the desired probability is we can use the initial value that we are given, the phi of 0, or the psi of 0. And here we know it's spin up. So we have here is c1 times our e1 state plus c2 times our e2 state. We can solve this system by substituting the representations here back in, and we can solve for c1 and c2. And these are a little messy and due to the fact that these eigenvectors are messy. So I give the c1 and c2 here, which is done by solving that system. And from here, we can calculate the probability just by setting up the equation for the time evolution state under the time-independent Hamiltonian. So we have the state psi of t, which is equal to c1, which in C, we have these which are here, so c1 e to the negative i omega t over 2 times our e1 state plus c2 times e to the negative i omega t omega naught t over 2 times our e2 state. And to calculate the probability, we just use the same process we've been doing at all times. We've been doing this whole semester. We want to know what our spin down in the z direction is, so the, posit the probability of measuring the spin down is equal to the modulus squared of our spin down bra and a product with our ket of psi of t. And then we plug in psi of t, which is this equation here. And then we can multiply through using the matrix representations. And we get this really messy probability. I don't have the exact value here for the probability due to the fact of how messy it is. However, we do get a final probability of measuring, of measuring spin down in the z direction as root 2 minus 1 squared all over 4 minus 2 root 2 quantity times c1 squared plus the quantity 
root 2 plus 1 squared all over 4 plus 2 root 2 times c2 squared plus 2 times the real part of this following complex exponential, which is c1, c2, root 2 minus 1 squared all over 4 minus 2 root 2 squared times e to the negative i omega naught t. So that'll give us our following probability as desired, and that'll be it. Thank you.